welcome back to Incademic, your research-based information source for all things tattoo, body modification, and more. I'm your host, The Professor, and on this episode, we're talking about tattoos in the sun. So we're getting pretty sciencey this time. We're going to be talking about three main things. Number one, how and where does the ink live in your skin? Number two, what happens when UV radiation hits that ink? And three, what you can do to prevent it safely. And as always, all the links to the sources and everything are in the description below, so please always try to stay informed when you're getting some sort of body modification, and that can include talking to a medical professional. And as always, talk to your artist. So let's talk about tattoo ink for just a second. See, tattoo ink isn't just one thing. See, it's actually an incredibly complex list of ingredients. But basically, it's particles of pigment that are suspended in a liquid. When that is injected under your skin, the liquid eventually disappears, whether it's absorbed or evaporated, and what you're left with is that pigment. Now, human skin is slightly translucent, that's why you can see the design. Also, the fact that it's just teensy little bit under your skin, it's not very far. And we'll be doing a big deep dive into inks and ingredients and all that stuff at some point, but for the sake of this video, that's good enough. Now, let's talk ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation, or UV, is anything on the electromagnetic spectrum between 100 and 400 nanometers long. I told you we we're going to get sciencey, and a nanometer is small. It's really small. It's actually just 0.0000000001 meters long. Now, what we can see with our eyes is anything from about 400 nanometers long, and that's violet to about 750 nanometers long, and that's red. Anything just above that is the infrared spectrum. That's your TV remotes and whatnot. Anything below 400 down to 100, like I said, that's ultraviolet. The higher the wavelength, the lower the energy. For example, a radio wave has a wavelength of about 10 meters, it's like 30 feet, very low energy. And when we do another video about colors and how they reflect and whatnot, then we'll get back into the electromagnetic spectrum. But for now, that's all that's important, right? The ultraviolet light, at least in reference to what we can see in the visual spectrum, is pretty high energy, and that's why we need to pay attention to it. So what does that mean for your skin? Essentially, UV light hates your skin. Actually, it may be more accurate to say that your skin hates UV light. And yes, I know, you get a little bit of vitamin D from sunlight, no one's saying that you don't. To be fair, you also get it from mushrooms and orange juice and milk and, and everything like that, so it's not the only way you can get vitamin D, just throwing that out there. Though the CDC does recommend 5 to 15 minutes of sunlight, 2 to 3 times a week. But remember, there's no such thing as a healthy tan. Anyway, there's three different kinds of UV light. There's UVA, B, and C. UVC light is far and away the most dangerous. It clocks in between 100 and 279 nanometers, and it is very damaging. Fortunately, 100% of it is blocked by the ozone, so it doesn't really come into play here. But yeah, it's good to know about. And that leaves us with UVA and UVB. UVB radiation is between 280 and 314 nanometers long. It gets stopped by the top layer of your skin. It only hits the epidermis. It's also what causes sunburns and sunscreens and things like that. This is what we talk about when you hear SPF, and it accounts for about 5% of the UV radiation that you get from the sun. UVA light, on the other hand, 315 to 400 nanometers long doesn't stop at your epidermis. It actually travels through that and gets down into your dermis. It's also what we attribute to aging. So while UVB will cause blisters and sunburns, UVA will, over time, cause cancer. Ultraviolet radiation damages DNA, that leads to cell mutations, and it just generally wreaks havoc on whatever it touches. Seeing why we have to deal with this with tattoos? So essentially, that's what happens with UV light penetrates your skin, hits that ink, and like I said, it just shreds whatever it comes in contact with. Side note, I did actually find a study when researching for this video about a certain kind of red tattoo ink that, when exposed to ultraviolet light, actually increased the rate of melanomas. And here I'm thinking, oh great, because I'm covered in red ink now. Turns out, and this is why it's important to read the entire study, not just trust the title or the abstract, in the study A, it was a red ink that isn't used on humans anymore. B, the effect was weak and may not be clinically relevant. And C, it was in mice. Okay, so now you know what you need to protect 
and what you need to protect it from. So I hear you asking, how do I do that? Well, there's basically three different ways that you can go about it. And I can tell you, having a freshly tattooed area exposed to the midday sun in a place like the southwest where it's crazy intense, it is not a pleasant experience. It hurts really bad. And when I did it, I was even worried. I mean, genuinely worried. Like, what have I done? You don't want to do that. What you do want to do is protect that new ink from all that harmful UV radiation. And to be fair, you want to protect all of your skin from it, but this is a tattoo channel, so you basically have three options, right? Number one, stay out of the sun. Just don't go out in it. If you can, just stay home or stay in the shade. You know, just don't put yourself in a situation where it is an issue. Simple as that. And like some people said about the sleeping on a tattoo with pets and stuff like that, yes, the best way to not get pet hair in a fresh tattoo is to not have pets. Sometimes things just aren't viable, right? Sometimes it's going to happen no matter what. So if you can do it, that's the foolproof way to do it, right? Second way to protect, cover up. Wear jeans, wear a hat, long sleeves, whatever you got to do. You know, just don't let the sun hit that spot. Again, simple. If you got ointment on it, if it's that new, yeah, you're going to get some ointment on your shirt or your jeans or whatever. That's, that's what the ointment is there for. It's to protect, right? It means that your clothes aren't hitting that open wound. Just cover it up. And again, I understand. Maybe that's not viable all the time, but neither is staying inside your house all the time. We've been doing that forever. Number C, use sunscreen. And I can already hear the comments now. So let's talk about sunscreen. Sunscreen comes in two basic forms, physical type and a chemical type. Physical sunscreens safely use zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in order to just block the UV rays from getting into your skin. Physical, that's why it's physical, just blocks it. Chemical sunscreens absorb. So the UV light hits you, the chemicals in the chemical <laughs> sunscreen absorb those UV rays. What you want is a sunscreen called broad spectrum because it handles both. The efficacy of that sunscreen is measured in SPF, sun protection factor. I mean, it really should be called sun burn protection factor because it's actually what it does. And a little bit of myth busting here, okay? An SPF of 15, for example, does not mean that you can spend 15 times longer in the sun than you could without it. It has nothing to do with time. It all has to do with the amount of solar exposure that you're getting and the kind of potency of that solar exposure during that time. For instance, you could spend an hour in the sun between 9 and 10 and get the same amount of exposure as you do for 15 minutes in the mid-afternoon. I mean, midday is brutal for UV rays. Although it depends on a bunch of variables like where you are, cloud cover, type of skin you have, because that's the biggest variable in all of this. It's you and your skin. Anyway, the whole point of that is that the higher the number of the SPF, the more protection that it provides you. I think everybody probably understands that. If you do get a little too much sun, you turn red, it's called erythema. You know it's that because if you push your finger against your skin and let it go, the redness goes away for a second. In this case, that erythema is UV damage. See again, typically UV radiation damages DNA. And when DNA gets damaged, it tries to repair itself with that exact same sequence. But when that fails, that failure results in permanent changes to that DNA. And it's worth mentioning here that if we developed cancer from a single cell mutation based on the cellular regeneration rate of our bodies, we'd be getting cancer every day. That said, UV radiation damage absolutely leads to melanomas. This is well established. Now it's worth mentioning here the safety of sunscreens. And you will hear some people say that sunscreens cause cancer. And my response to that is we need more studies on it. We need more studies on it because, for example, one of the three main chemicals you find in chemical sunscreens, benzophenone, has been linked to hormonal changes and is classified in California as a carcinogen. Not to mention the fact that sunscreens aren't dose controlled. There's very little regulation between markets and between countries. So it's really difficult to say that X does Y or A does B or sunscreens cause cancer. And remember, Saying we need more study is not the same thing as saying I can't say no, therefore yes. So what can you do? Cover up. It's really that simple. Just 
cover up. We know the sun can cause skin cancer. We know what UV radiation can do to our skin. We might know that some chemicals in some sunscreens might have detrimental effects to our health. So put on a hat, sit in the shade. And again, look, this goes for all your skin, not just the tattooed parts, right? Okay, so let's presume that for whatever reason, you get a sunburn on a fresh tattoo. What do you do? Really the same kind of thing you would do with any other type of burn. Apply a cool, clean compress to help reduce the inflammation, put on some sort of hypoallergenic moisturizer. Whatever you do, keep it out of the sun and don't put it under hot water. Trust me. And of course, as always, if it starts to swell, if you see pus, <laughs> if, if anything starts to feel like it's really wrong, don't hesitate to see a medical professional. Send a picture to your artist. You'll know when your skin is just angry because it's gone through the trauma of getting a tattoo. And you'll know when there's something genuinely wrong. The trick is when it's your first. You don't know how your body reacts. And that's fine. If you think there's a problem, trust your body. And of course, if your ink gets impacted by this in some way, well, that's what touch-up appointments are for. Just go and get it fixed. So again, there are a few ways to prevent this from happening in the first place. First way, subscribe to this channel. First way, don't go out in the sun. Just stay inside until it's basically healed, or at least until it doesn't feel like an open wound anymore. Second way, cover it up. Long sleeves, a hat, jeans. If you got it on your foot, don't wear sandals. You know, that, it's not rocket science. Third, use a sunscreen. I personally, We'll just keep it out of the sun for like two weeks. Once it's healed, I will usually move to a combination of lotion and sunscreen. If I'm doing something like going for a run or something like that, I'll put on some spray on 50 SPF. We were just in Hawaii recently and I spent virtually the entire time with 100 SPF on because that sun is powerful. I mean, you paid for the ink, right? And it's your body, protect it. If you wanna learn more about how your body deals with tattoos and how you can make it easier on yourself, check out one of the videos linked here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, give me a like, all that stuff. You know what the routine is. Until next time.